So what if the OnePlus Open was not just the company's first foldable, but also a better one right now? As yes, the OnePlus Open is official and is more affordable, more ergonomic, and has better cameras than pretty much every other one out there. Rumors of the M3 iMac point to things making an interesting shift for whenever these get launched. And yes, it seems Apple's Vision Pro made Google pull its Project Iris out of mothballs. I'm Jaime Rivera, and yes, I do have the OnePlus open. I have to hold it this way because it's green, but uh, uh, the final software got pushed to my device three days ago, so it's not enough time for a review. Stay tuned. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today are coming later, so let's begin with Google since we have new reports about their possible augmented reality glasses. It's reported that Google's Iris Augmented Reality Glasses project may have been resumed despite previous reports of its cancellation. Iris was originally aimed at building upon technology acquired from North and was showcased at Google I.O. last year with live translation glasses. In August, it was suggested that Google was pitching Iris and AR smart glasses to OEMs, including Samsung, with a potential release in 2025. Now, the latest beta update of the Google application on Android hints to this being back on track. A new string within the app suggests that invoking the Google Assistant on Iris involves long pressing the right temple, similar to the Sony Link Buds. Previous information hinted at Iris taking cues from the North's focal points, possibly including ring-worn controls. The glasses are expected to have strong integration with the Google Assistant, enabling common actions like calling friends and setting timers. Now, whether Google follows through with the project and releases AR smart glasses either on its own or through OEMs in a partnership remains uncertain, but I assume Apple's Vision Pro had a lot to do with this revival. We'll see if it happens. Now, let's talk about Apple because we have some conflicting rumors about the upcoming iMacs. A few days ago, we reported that Cupertino was working on the launch of a new model before the end of the year. However, now Ming-Chi Kuo predicts the release of the new 24-inch iMac in 2024, aligning with previous speculations by Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who also foresees a new iMac arriving in the same year. Now, Quo doesn't really specify the chip that Apple will employ, but German didn't mention the M3 chip, anticipated to feature an 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU, but now built on cutting-edge 3 nanometer process. This M3 chip promises substantial performance and efficiency enhancements, just like we've seen with Apple's A17 Pro. The current 24-inch iMac introduced in 2021 still has an M1 chip and has not seen updates since the M1 debut, indicating an overdue refresh. German has consistently maintained that Apple has no plans of an M2 iMac, aligning with Quo's projected timeline. So yeah, Quo and German are pretty much on point here with uh, us having to expect something next year. So yeah, if you're in the market for an iMac, you might want to wait. And since we're talking Apple and chips, let's continue with some new details about the chipset that will power the upcoming series of iPhones. So as we all know, Cupertino introduced the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max with the A17 Pro, and that caused confusion about what to expect with the iPhone 16 series. However, according to analyst Jeff Pooh, all four models of the iPhone 16 will feature A18 branded chips, and a prediction he initially shared last month and reiterated in a recent research note. Pooh anticipates that these chips will be manufactured using TSMC's second generation 3 nanometer process and 3E, distinguishing the them from the A17 Pro chip on the iPhone 15 Pro models, which is using TSMC's first generation 3 nanometer process, which is N3B, and uh, regarded as a transition design. N3 offers cost efficiency and improved yield compared to N3B, according to TSMC. The standard iPhone 15 and 15 Plus currently use the A16 Bionic chip, so yeah, it's going to be a dramatic jump to go directly to A18 and jumping the A17 branded chip. Who has a track record that pretty much makes him very accurate? I mean, having previously reported Apple's decision to abandon solid state buttons on the iPhone 15 Pro models, the inclusion of 8 gigabytes of RAM on the iPhone 15 Pro models, and the higher starting price of the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to the 14 Pro Max. So yeah, A18 for the base, A18 Pro for the Pro models is what we've speculated earlier, so I guess that's what's gonna be the case. 
And finally for the hottest news today, let's talk about OnePlus and the official launch of their first foldable. Some are calling this the best foldable and I'm close to agreeing. See, the Open adopts a more comfortable yet taller and wider book style foldable design, making it feel like a regular phone when closed and regular tablet when open. And it's actually lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Yes, this is literally Oppo's Find N3, but slated for global markets. Now, when closed, it features a 6.31 inch super fluid LTPO 3.0 AMOLED display with a dynamic refresh rate of 10 to 120 hertz, a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and a crazy 2800 nits of brightness. Inside, you have a 7.82 inch flexi fluid LTPO 3.0 AMOLED display with similar specifications. This might also be the first foldable that really focuses on camera specifications without excuses. The main 48 megapixel sensor from Sony is its new stack technology, while the ultra wide camera has a 48 megapixel sensor and the telephone photo is a crazy 64 megapixels in the sensor. I know, lots of power here. We also have two selfie cameras, 20 and 32 megapixels inside and out respectively. Under the hood, it boasts a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, 512 gigs of storage. The device is powered by a 4805 milliamp hour battery with 67 watt charging, promising a full charge in 42 minutes and more than a day of usage. It offers a pretty genius multitasking capability with the OnePlus Canvas interface and supports up to three windows on its expansive screen. The device comes in Voyager Black, which is a sort of a leather finish, and emerald dust with a glass finish that I'm currently using. Maybe the biggest story is you get all this for $16.99, making it less expensive than every other foldable in the United States. And you get free OnePlus Buds 2 Pro in addition to that. In today's question, though, I mean, what do you think about the OnePlus Open? Because I have to agree, there's a lot to like about this phone. My experience hasn't been great necessarily with the software, but it was, again, not ready. So we were waiting for the final build. It is now out and uh, so far so good. I think it's a winner, but then again, the question is if you're willing to adopt the foldable, because I think this is the right time. That's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me test phones early. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.